I found the best character from every single Star Wars movie, and in this video, I'm going to go over all of them. So without further ado, let's get into it. And because this list is in chronological order, we're starting it off with Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Now, as you might expect, it came down to two characters, and obviously, they were none other than Qui-Gon Jinn and Darth Maul. Both of them are incredibly cool in their own ways, and I will admit, I may have lost a little bit of sleep choosing between them, but in the end, I was forced to go with Qui-Gon Jinn, and that is mainly because Darth Maul has about 8 minutes of screen time in the entire movie. Although, so to be fair, around 7 minutes of that was Duel of the Fates, which was absolutely epic, but I digress. Anyway, Qui-Gon Jinn is one of the coolest Jedi to ever exist, and he was very wise and perceptive. He was also a big reason that Anakin Skywalker even became a Jedi in the first place. No, scratch that. He was the only reason, and it really was a shame when he got- Please do not copyright strike me Bon Jovi, I really appreciate it. Finally, it certainly doesn't hurt that Liam Neeson is an incredible actor, and he characterizes Qui-Gon really well. It feels like he was born to play this Jedi. Coming up as the second movie in Star Wars, it's Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, and to me, the answer is obvious. It's Count Dooku. This should not be a surprise to you at all, and if you've ever watched this YouTube channel before, then you know that your boy's a sucker for Count Dooku, and I'm pretty sure that I've talked about him in the last four videos in a row that I've made. That's how much I like the guy. It also helps that in terms of awesome characters, Attack of the Clones isn't exactly chock full of them. And that's not to say that there aren't good ones, but Darth Tyrannus easily steals the spotlight. His entire story as a fallen Jedi turned Sith is just really interesting to me, and Attack of the Clones is the only time in Star Wars where George Lucas makes it clear that Dooku isn't an evil guy, but rather, simply a man who sees the corruption in the Republic and the Jedi Order and wants no part of it. Then Dave Filoni came along and needed one big evil villain for the Clone Wars TV show, so they turned Dooku into a heartless sociopath. But you know what? It is what it is. Dooku is still a cool character in the Clone Wars, so that's that. Finally, Dooku has two lightsaber duels in Attack of the Clones, and I just love watching him in a fight. I mean, what's not to love with that curved hilt and elegant technique, so that's always gonna put a little pep in my step, if you know what I'm saying. Come on, you guys should know by now that if I make a video about the best characters in Star Wars, Dooku is going to find his way on there somehow. It's basically a rule. Making its way to number three, this is where the fun begins, it's Revenge of the Sith, and choosing the best character was a tough one, but in the end, I landed on, ah yes, the negotiator, Obi-Wan Kenobi. And actually, that reminds me of a rule that I forgot to mention, which is that a character can only appear once on this list. So, for example, because I put Obi-Wan here at episode 3, he isn't allowed to be the best character of any other movies in this video. I hope that makes sense, but now, let me talk about why Kenobi is at Revenge of the Sith. It was a tough choice between him and Anakin, but I think that Obi-Wan deserves it. Episode 3 is peak Obi-Wan in all of Star Wars, that and the Clone Wars, and this is where he really becomes super fun to watch. He has about 5 lightsaber duels throughout this one movie, in which he ends up killing General Grievous and immortally wounding Anakin. And to top it all off, the one-liner game is on point. Point. He is hitting us with some bangers. Another happy landing. Finally, Revenge of the Sith is the movie where Ewan McGregor unlocked Obi-Wan Kenobi's final form. I mean, don't get me wrong, he was good in the other two prequels, but everything about him in this movie is on point. He nails the drip, he nails the hair, he nails the hat, and he absolutely pops off with the lightsaber choreography. What a legend. Coming in at number 4 is Rogue One, and I gotta be honest, it's been a hot minute since I watched this movie, but all of the characters were actually pretty good if I remember correctly, so picking between them was tough. I'm gonna have to end up going with Jyn Erso though, because she was actually a really interesting protagonist, and proof that Star Wars fans are are perfectly fine with women being main characters, so long as those women are written well. Take notes, Ray. On top of that, her arc throughout the movie is good, and she's really easy to root for, so overall, probably the best character in Rogue One, although Cassian Andor is a close second, but Jin just beats him out. Number 5 is the only Star Wars movie to not make a profit, and that is Solo, a Star Wars story. Now, I gotta be honest, I think that the best character in this movie is the one and only Chewbacca. It's really cool to see his origin story as an Imperial execution device, and one of the best parts of this entire movie is seeing him and Han start to bond. He's not exactly the greatest character to ever exist, and it doesn't help that he's never spoken a word of English, but I don't know, I kind of like that he only roars, it kind of adds to his charm, and if he was speaking like a normal person, I think it'd be really weird and off-putting. Although I just gotta say, there's no freaking way in the galaxy that Han Solo just happened to know Shrywook. I mean, a language based entirely off of roars? Up until this movie, I didn't even know that human vocal cords could do this. Regardless though, this movie isn't exactly known for its cast of breathtaking characters, and quite frankly, there was no one better to choose, so Chewie, hit the hyperdrive, pal, you made the list. Uh, Alright, now we're finally entering into the original trilogy, and it's going to be really hard to choose who's the best character from every movie, because there are so many great ones. But for A New Hope, I'm going to have to go with Han Solo. There's a reason that when he was first introduced, he captivated audiences like nobody's business, and just something about him was so cool, I couldn't even put my finger on what it was. But he had this persona that just radiated confidence, and every time he was part of a scene, he just made it so much better. Han Solo also had a phenomenal journey throughout the movie, going from a completely 
completely selfish loner to a heroic savior, coming back at the last second to save Luke and help him blow up the Death Star. And finally, Harrison Ford is the perfect person to play Han Solo. And yes, I know that this is like the third time in the video that I've given an actor credit for how good a character is, but it's freaking true, man. There are so many people out there who don't like Anakin Skywalker solely because they believe that Hayden Christensen is a bad actor. And having someone who can represent the character well is a crucial step for them actually being good, obviously. However, with every nice chocolate chip cookie, there always comes a salty spot. And Harrison Ford's salty spot is that he hates the character of Han Solo, almost as much as he hates snakes. And believe me, he hates snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? But no, seriously, Harrison has been begging for Han Solo to be killed off since the Empire Strikes Back. And George Lucas has always denied him, thank goodness. But then Disney finally listened to him and gave Han Solo a big old chest piercing. Regardless, we were very lucky to have him for the entire original trilogy, but I truly believe that the movie he shined through the most in was definitely A New Hope, and you could tell that Harrison Ford is having a lot of fun playing the character, and it's heartwarming to see, you know? Again, picking a single best character for these three original movies was extremely hard, but if there's one character that everybody just loves, it's Luke Skywalker, and I couldn't go through this list without putting him in here somewhere, I mean, come on. So for episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back, it's the man himself. And speaking of men, that reminds me, be sure to subscribe if you're enjoying the video so far, I'd really appreciate it. Now don't get me wrong, Luke was amazing in all three of the original movies, but it came down to Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi for which one he'd be the best in, and I had to go with the former. What's so good about Luke in this movie is that he goes through the ringer, he barely knows how to use the force, he can't really understand Yoda's training, and he gets obliterated in his duel with Vader. George Lucas gave Luke a ton of obstacles in this movie, and therefore, when he overcomes all of those obstacles in the next movie, it's way more satisfying. Satisfying. On top of that, The Empire Strikes Back really feels like Luke's story, you know? Like, the other main characters are on their own adventure, but Luke is really the centerfold here. He's the one who destroys the AT-ATs, he's the one who trades with Yoda on Dagobah, he's the one that goes to save his friends when they get captured, and he's the one that takes on Darth Vader in a head-to-head -head duel. And, again, I know I keep saying this, but Mark Hamill really brings Luke to life, in a way that I've never seen an actor do. He somehow makes him seem mature and genuine, but at the same time, he's young and lively and full of energy, and it really was a great casting choice. Picking the the best character in Empire Strikes Back really came down to Luke and Darth Vader. And because I did end up going with Luke, it's only natural that for Return of the Jedi, you don't know the power of the dark side. That's right, Lord Vader, in my opinion, is the best character. This is the defining movie for Darth Vader in a lot of ways. In the first two originals, he's just kind of a big bad guy and the Emperor's lapdog, although don't get me wrong, he's still incredible. But in Return of the Jedi, he goes from a full-on Dark Lord of the Sith to the hero of the trilogy, saving his son and killing the Emperor, which therefore fulfills the prophecy of him bringing balance to the force and makes him the chosen one. We also close the movie with CGI Hayden Christensen, which is kind of weird to see, but at the same time feels more right and is an overall pretty good ending to his arc. Return of the Jedi also has one of the better lightsaber duels in the original trilogy, where Vader and Luke fight it out in the Emperor's throne room on the Death Star. And this is where Vader returns to the light and chucks Palpatine down the reactor. Also, this is random, but have you ever thought that until 1999, basically no one knew the Emperor's name? I mean, throughout the entire original trilogy, everyone just calls him the Emperor. And then later in the prequels, he was dubbed Palpatine or Sidious. I know that's off topic, but it just occurred to me. Now we enter the final three of this video, and for once, I am sorry to say that I've not been looking forward to this, because here we are at the sequel trilogy. Now, if you enjoy the sequels, then I am happy for you, and I wish you well, but it is no secret around here that I am not exactly what you would call a fan of the Star Wars sequels, so finding one good character from each movie was quite a challenge for me. However, I'm proud to say that I successfully did it, and the best character from The Force Awakens was Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren is actually a pretty cool villain in this movie. He's powerful, he's intimidating, and he actually is someone who you'd be scared to mess with. Then he goes rapidly downhill for the rest of the trilogy, but hey, that's why he's the best character of The Force Awakens and not the entire sequel trilogy. It was tough choosing between him and Finn as the best character in this movie, but in the end, obviously, I went with Kylo Ren. Personally, I'm a pretty big Adam Driver fan. He has a really cool story, if you didn't know. What with him being a Marine and then out of the blue deciding one day, you know what, I'm gonna be an actor. He gives a whole TED talk about it if you're interested, but that's off topic. When you're watching The Force Awakens and you see Kylo Ren arrive on scene, it genuinely looks cool and for the entire movie, he maintains the air of a powerful villain who demands your respect. Sure, it doesn't really help that he keeps getting usurped by Rey, first not being able to read her mind at all, and then getting destroyed by her in a lightsaber duel, despite the fact that he's been trained for years on end and she didn't know what a lightsaber was until yesterday. But I mean, he's still pretty awesome in this movie and definitely one of the better characters. And to top it all off, he has an incredible lightsaber, which looks really cool. And speaking of lightsabers, that 
brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Onus Saber. Onus Saber creates high quality replica lightsabers for a pretty affordable price. And if you're currently in the market to pick up a nice lightsaber for yourself, this is definitely the place to look. Because right now, they're having a 40% off deal on every single one of their lightsabers. To make it even better, there's free shipping on every single order, so you don't have to worry about paying for that whatsoever. And finally, if you use code JED when you're checking out, you'll automatically receive $15 off of any order. I mean, if you take advantage of this deal, you could potentially be saving hundreds of dollars. And you have to act fast, because the deal ends on June 30th. Thanks again to Onus Saber for sponsoring this video, and the link to the Onus Saber store is in the description below, so be sure to check that out. Alright, now getting towards the end of this list, let the past die, kill it if you have to, we have The Last Jedi, otherwise known as Ryan Johnson's love letter to Star Wars. Surprisingly enough, it was really easy to identify the best character in this movie, who is the one and only Moon Knight, I mean Miguel O'Hara, I mean Poe Dameron, Poe Dameron, that's what I've been trying to say this whole time, Poe Dameron. Throughout The Last Jedi, Poe is one of the only characters who actually acts like a normal human would. In the beginning of the movie, he gets carried away in a bombing run and ends up killing a ton of pilots and bombers in his haste, which forces him to consider that maybe there are a few different ways to define victory. Then, later on in the movie, when the atrocious Admiral Holdo refuses to tell anyone how she plans to outwit the First Order and makes it look like she has no plan whatsoever, Poe decides that he doesn't want to die as a result of Holdo's incompetence and tries to stage a mutiny. Then Princess Leia wakes up from her nap, stuns Poe, and reveals that Holdo has actually had a plan all along, but didn't tell anyone and made it look like she had no idea what to do because... Yeah, the movie doesn't really say why either. The notion that Holdo was actually in the right here and that not telling literally anyone her plan for saving their lives was the right thing to do is really dumb to me, and a straight up awful piece of writing. And The Critical Drinker has a whole video on this entire plot point, so I really recommend that you check that out later. Regardless, my point is that Poe actually makes a logical, informed decision here, and I really like that. And overall, he was probably the best character in The Last Jedi. Okay, coming in as the 11th movie on this list, we have The Rise of Skywalker. And to be honest, it was really hard to find the best character in this movie. But in the end, I finally settled on Lando Calrissian, who isn't a huge character in this movie, but he's about as important as Finn, so I figure it counts. You know, maybe it's a bad sign when the best character, or at least the most tolerable character in your movie, is simply an old version of a character created 30 years ago, but nah, I gotta be off my rocker, that couldn't be it. Honestly, even though I did pick Lando, I kinda wanna leave it up to you guys, because it was really hard thinking of a good character from this movie. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments about who the best character in The Rise of Skywalker is. But you need to check out this video right here if you wanna find out what the top 10 best lightsaber duels in Star Wars actually are, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe.